very warm welcome to everybody around the world uh, watching this uh, Boutonneau session uh, for the uh, International uh, Virtual Festival. And this session is entitled Giving It Both Barrels. My name is Nigel Wilkinson. I'm the Master Sommelier for Boutonneau Wines. And joining me today from France, from Kiran, from Domaine Boutonneau, we have Julien Dugas. Say hello, Julien. Yes, hello. <laughs> And, um, also us, and also joining us from South Africa, from Franschhoek, from our Wilderberg estate, is uh, Jean de Plessis, or JD, uh, JD Russo. Um, so say hello, JD. Hello, everybody. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. As I said before, today's session is all about oak uh, and the use of oak in winemaking. We're gonna have a little sort of two minute presentation with regards to uh, oak that I've prepared. And then we're gonna launch into a interview format uh, discussing with both uh, Julien and JD, the importance of oak at Domaine Boutineau and also at Wilderberg. So in terms of oak, which oak is used and where is it from? In essence, there are many different uh, types of oak uh, species or oak um, um, uh, uh, families, uh, but there are three uh, particular strains of the family of oak that we use for uh, winemaking. And in essence, that is, as it says there, Quercus alba, which is American oak, which is the oak mostly found in the eastern part of the US, particularly around Missouri and Iowa and the, um, the Arkansas area. We also have uh, Quercus silasis, which is French oak found in many different sort of French forests, whether that be Allier or Tronquet, Limousin, uh, Vosges, etc. Now, Quercus is also found in central and eastern, uh, central Europe and also eastern parts of Russia. And then the third type of oak that we, we, we use in winemaking is called Quercus roba, which is the uh, Slovenian oak. And for many years, I was uh, under the impression Slovenia, uh, Slavonia was a country. Of course, it isn't. Uh, Slavonia is a region within Croatia. And this type of oak is also found in uh, parts of Slovenia and Bosnia-Herzegovina and also Serbia. And this would be the oak that you will find in a lot of um, uh, wineries around northern Italy. So certainly in Piemonte and stretching across to Veneto, they tend to use uh, this oak historically in that part of, uh, of the world. With regards to how a barrel is made, I just thought it'd be interesting just to see quickly the, the, the process that is involved in uh, producing a barrel. So as I put the first slide on, um, firstly, choosing the right tree. Uh, the right tree is very important in the fact that the tree, the actual tree, where it is grown, what family of the oak uh, is, um, it, it is, is important. Um, the climate in which the, the tree is um, uh, grown in, plus also um, how old the tree will all have an impact on the quality of the oak. So we fell the tree and we will cut the tree into blocks. Then stage three is scoring the staves from the block. Cutting those staves and the size of the staves are important. Uh, thicker staves um, also in terms of the size of the staves can have a contributing factor. The staves are then seasoned. In essence, they're placed outside for up to two years and the seasoning can have a huge effect on, um, the, on, on the barrels that are produced. Once the staves have been seasoned, they're brought back into the cooperage and then they are shaved and prepared. Stage seven is configuring the barrel. So here, uh, the, uh, the gentleman in the, in the picture is, is working out what staves will fit in to, to certain um, parts of the barrel, the positioning of the, of the staves. Then the cooper will shape the barrel. 
So as you can see there, he's, it, this is a very sort of uh, labor intensive, highly skilled job. Uh, and the cooper there is making sure that, that everything is fitting neatly and everything is in the right place. Then in order to um, work those staves, uh, the staves are heated. Now, traditionally, it was done over a flame. Uh, you can also do this process under steam. And whether you've done it under flame or whether you've done it under steam, again, will have an impact on the uh, final barrel. We then do a process called toasting. So within the barrel, uh, a flame is um, lit uh, and the inside of the barrel is charred. And winemakers will decide on the level of toasting that they want from their barrel. So they can go from a light, light toast all the way to a heavy toast. The side panels, of course, have to be fixed. And then the holes are inserted into the barrels so that we can get the liquid into the barrels. And that's the finished barrel that's at uh, our winery in Kiran. So yeah. we've got a little video now for you to, to um, uh, watch, uh, which only takes about 30 seconds. And maybe Julian, could you just describe to us what's happening in the video, please? Yes, it's a day where, where we we topping uh, the barrel. Uh, you 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 don't you can see there is a truck, uh, a pump, and a Gauthier uh, who work with me uh, with a with a gun topping the barrel one by one. Fantastic, excellent, thank you. Okay, so that's an introduction to uh, oak and the production of barrels. Um, JD, please, can you tell us a little bit about your oak philosophy at Wilderberg, please? Well, Nigel, um, Julian, looking at me like that, it feels like I have to say it's only French oak. But um, no, um, so on our whites, we work 90%, uh, um, well, 100% is 600 and 500 litre barrels. But we work um, with mostly French oak, but also then on our Wilderberg white, we work with an uh, a cooperage called Stockinger, um, which is actually from Austria. And also when it comes to toasting, we, we prefer more a blonde toast, so a lighter toast um, to a more heavy toast. So we like the freshness in the wine rather than the charriness or the bacon keeps or that, that type of flavors um, in the wine. Fantastic. Thank you. And Julianne, uh, why is oak an important factor for you at Domaine Boutineau? Yes, uh, oak is important in the domain Boutino. We use uh, two, two, two different uh, oak size. Uh, for the fermentation, we use oak in the domain Boutino. In the tronconic oak tank, it's a big tank in oak, 60,000 liters, uh, uh, where we do the fermentation. Uh, when you use a size like that, the oak don't give uh, aromatic, but just help the tannin to be more elegant. And we have one cuvee like that. The name is Lessis. It's fermented in the tronconic oak tank and adding one year in this tank. Not to give a flavor, but just to, to help the tannin to be more elegant. And the second way where we use the oak, it's uh, for the aging, uh, because we have another cuvee with a little bit more structure and fermented in stainless steel tank. And uh, we chose to add in two years this cuvee, and the name of this cuvee is La Côte Sauvage. Fantastic. Now, a question's just popped into the chat box with regards to sort of sourcing the barrels. Um, obviously, we don't have our own cooperage, cooperage yet, um, uh, uh, within within Boutineau. Um, but how would you source your barrels? If I could ask JD first. Well, um it's actually for for me it's a trial and error so you have to work with so many cooperages in the beginning and then you narrow it down and you know what works and sometimes on paper it's not just uh, this barrel works for say for julian in france because the grapes i work even if it's grenache or cedar it's not going to work in the same barrel we don't have the same um so what we do is well experience um, um own experience but also in the one greater winemaking team we we um 
yeah, we, we help each other. Um, so like I said, I think I work with four French cooperages and then the one Austrian cooperage. Okay. And Julien, how, how many cooper, coopers would you work with? Uh, I, I use uh, uh, an only French oak uh, in Kerana because uh, we make a French wine. And uh, also because I think the, the wedding with a, a French oak, it's, uh, it's good uh, with the wine uh, in Kerana. And it's that I'm looking for uh, to, to the final result in my wine. A French oak, uh, for me, it's more elegant, keep less aromatic and, and uh, help more the wine to get the tannin more soft and uh, increase the finesse inside uh, the wine. Okay, so just to go back to that, Julian, would you, would you ever consider using American oak? Uh, for, for me, American oak, it's a little bit too much, if I can say that, uh, because uh, the, the aromatic in, in oak is high, uh, because the, the, the oak tree comes from different uh, country. And for me, it's I saw a lot of uh, the, the, the fruit part and the, the finesse to the wine. Uh, maybe in another country with a, a different variety than the French uh, South of France variety, uh, it's good. But uh, for me, I judge is, is not a, a, a good result in our wine. Okay. And JD, you mentioned there about the use of Austrian, Austrian Stockinger um, or Stockinger um, oak. Um, why? <laughs> Um, Nigel, so in 2017, I was privileged to tour France and all the wine regions, and we did a lot of tastings in the winery, um, in the wineries with winemakers. And in Sancerre, we there was one producer um, that we went into the winery and we tasted a lot of the barrels. And it was uh, always this one barrel that just popped out, and it was like, wow, this is actually amazing. We like the minerality, we like the freshness in this wine. Came back to South Africa and we, we sat around a table and we decided this is actually a barrel that can work very well with our uh, Semillon, um, our old vine Semillon in French Hook. And yeah, we started importing it and yeah, ever since we, we've been using Stockinger on, on, on the Wildeberg White. So is it only on Semillon currently that you use this, 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 this oak for? Yes, and um, so I've got, yeah, so we're playing around with Shannon as well this year um, to see what that brings to it. But um, so currently it's just just on the Semillon, yes. Okay, so um, I was going to ask um, um, Julia, um, are there any particular sort of great varieties that are particularly suited uh, within Kiran for 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 the oak that you use? Uh, you have some variety. Accept more the agents than another one, but I, I think the, the the principal thing to 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 remember it's when you put a wine in barrel without a perfect balance, you will have not a perfect result. Uh, it for that when I when I make uh, the cuvee La Côte Sauvage, uh, I I make my blend to have a perfect balance before put the wine in barrel. Uh, in example, an Nigel. I will not put a pure Grenache so ripe with a high degree in, in alcohol in barrel because you, you will rise the bad balance in the wine. I think it's important to remember that if you put a good wine in barrel, you will have a nice result. If you, if you put a wine with a, not a, a right balance, you will rise the, the, the bad sink on the wine. This is very important to remember. Yeah. Okay, so so Julian, so what you, in essence, what you're saying there is is the vintage can play a key part on what you decide to put in in oak in some circumstances. Uh, the, uh, we are we are lucky in, in south of France because uh, we, we we make a blend. Uh, you you know, it's uh, it's forbidden to to use a, a single variety, and uh, I, I I like uh, to to say uh, in the south of France we are more regular maybe vintage after vintage than another part of the world because we can correct uh, the, the bad balance with a blend. In example, if you have a, a vintage good for, for the Syrah and the Montvet and maybe a little bit less good for the Grenache, with, with a game of uh, the, the blending, you arrive to, to, to a final result very perfect. When you work in the single variety, 
if it's a bad vintage for this variety, it's still tricky uh, after for the hygiene. Okay, fantastic. So, JD, would there be any particularly great varieties that you wouldn't consider putting in oak? Well, if you look at the Wildeberg wines we currently make, um, our terroir Sauvignon Blanc is an unknown component. Or some years we will put a little blob of uh, 600, old 600 liter barrel fermented wine in it. Um, the reason for that is we want to make a style, uh, the more minerality style, more stainless steel fermented um, on the lease for nine months. Um, I think there's varieties that work better in oak than others. Um, even sometimes when, when we started with, well, I started with winemaking, people said Shannon doesn't really belong in oak because it tends to, to, to absorb too much of the oak and then you get just like biting into a table. Um, but I think technology and our knowledge um, uh, came so far. So that's why we use 600 liter barrels. We use lighter toasting. And um, like, you, you know, the terroir Shannon Blanc, um, it's, it's, it's big, it, like, like Julian said, it's all about the balance. And also for us is, um, the wine must be the picture and the barrel only the frame that comes around the picture, not the opposite. So like Julian said, if you start with a bad wine, a barrel is not going to make it a better wine. It's just, as we call it also, the amplifier is putting um, the wine in this barrel and just amplify everything the wine already has um, through the barrel. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. So Julian, does the size of the barrel actually make much difference to the finished wine? It's a little bit a, a, a secret recipe, but uh, uh, I, I can tell you uh, I use two sizes of, of, uh, of barrel uh, in, in Tehran. Uh, one is a de nuit, 600 liters, uh, and, and the normal barrel, 228 liters. Why? Because the, 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 the feeling of the, of the ox, the result, the final result is different because the size uh, involves a lot of, of the aging. Uh, I think the demi-mui work in the middle and the end of the, of the mouth, and the barrel work more in the beginning of the mouth. It, for that, I blend both, and uh, we have a final result with a perfect aromatic oak integration during all the testing. Okay. And JD, I, I'd like to ask, why would the toasting have an effect on the finished wine? Sure. I think the toasting is, well, it's obviously the cooperage and they've got their house toast and I think it's quite a, a, a big part of this whole barrel and the winemaking procedure. So like I said earlier, I remember when I started off in the winery industry, I made a 100% new oak Shiraz in 100% uh, in American oak and it was just a vanilla bomb. It was like going to the movies with candy floss and just sitting there with your popcorn. But it, it was at the time, that's what uh, everybody made. Um, I think now the tasting is people are moving away from chariness. People are, are moving away from too high tasting um, to more towards the more, like I said, a high, we call it a hydro or a very blonde light tasting um, to, to respect the wine that you put in the barrel and not to trying to overdo the wine with, with the tastiness of the, of the, of the barrel. Yeah. So JD, when, when you buy a barrel, you, you specify the size, the, the yeah. toasting level, um, any other sort of um, uh, factors to consider? Yeah, so if you, if you, if you like a, a, a cooperage or this is uh, what works for you, you, you can decide. So some of them make six or well, bigger as well in different sizes. But like I said, we only use 600 and 500 liter barrels, which is a big difference. There's a big difference, not only 100 liters, it's the thickness of the staves as well. So for me, a 600 liter is a is a, almost like a tank. It's it will keep you for so longer because the staves are quite thick. So it's a very slow maturation process. Where a 500 liter is a barrel for me. It's almost like a 300 liter. It's not only the size that with the with the thinnest staves. Um, so yes, you, you can choose first of all size. Then um, some of the cooperages, um, the French cooperages, got different uh, forests where where the, the 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 wood is from. And then after that, you you can do toasting levels, um, high toasting, medium toasting, etc. And now that these days they've got the seasoning. It's 20 month seasoning. It's 30, so it gets quite uh, technical and quite complex. But like I said earlier, the best way is to use a vineyard in that barrel, taste it afterwards and to see does this work um, or not. So, yeah. sure, sure. There's a question actually coming from Norway, uh, which, which, which I was also going to touch on. Um, and it's a question to you both really. 
Uh, would you ever consider using oak, ch oak chips in your wine? So maybe if I can ask JD first. <laughs> um, chips and staves. Okay, so with Wildeberg, definitely I think um, not. Um, it's a it's a wine. It's a wine style that um, needs longevity. It's a it's a more premium style. But you did you do get wines that like we are in harvest now. Um, say a Shiraz that needs to be on the market in the next six months, and starting from staves going up with to uh, starting from chips going up with the staves. So it's chips you extract quite a lot and quite quickly out of the wine. So I'm talking now a month, four, uh, three weeks. You're done. You take it out. It's like almost like a tea bag you put in with um, with chips in it, and then you get staves. Um, that you can, um, and, and I must say these days, the staves, the technology around staves is almost like they use the same wood, the same seasoning like a barrel, but it's just a stave because um, life, like you know, everything becomes so fast paced. So that will give you six months on the staves if you ferment or just matured and you take it off the staves. Um, but it's a different style of wine. I think it's a, it's a wine with high drinkability. It needs to be drunk in the uh, first year that you make it. Um, where your barrels is more your premium, more your, more your, your longevity wine you can put away for, for longer. And just to explain that um, to, the, to the viewers, um, you, you, you're literally meaning with, with regards to staves is adding big planks of wood into stainless steel tanks. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Excellent. And then for the tea bags, uh, you said those tea bags are full of uh, oak chips. So yeah, that's full of oak chips, and you can actually make your own blend now. You can uh, there's Hungarian oak, French oak, American oak, a blend of that, and you can you can put it in a tank and ferment, or well, you can ferment with it, or you can add it afterwards um, to do mellow or maturation on it. Yeah. Okay. And Julian, what would be your view on oak chips? Uh, in first, in, in Tehran, it's forbidden uh, because it's a crew. All the crew in Rwanda it's forbidden. After the, the chip, for me, uh, it, it, you can play with that uh, for a very uh, enter-level wine, just to give the aromatic, but uh, you forget the aging. Uh, you, you give the aromatic only. Uh, maybe you can uh, add a, a little bit of complexity in the uh, sample wine, easy drinking wine, but no more. And uh, in the time, uh, you cannot compare with the barrel because uh, the, the ships aromatic, like uh, GD say, it's during maximum six months uh, after it's uh, the, the wine uh, come, come back in, in the beginning. It's a volatile aromatic, uh, to be honest with you, in, in the wine. And you don't have the oxidation uh, and, the, and the tannin given by the barrel. You cannot compare. Uh a question again that sort of uh, many people are alluding to on the chat box is um, obviously sort of barrels can be very expensive. How many vintages would you get from one barrel, Julian? Uh, normally, there is not the uh, uh, exact rule, but uh, I use a demi uh, because it, it's more bigger and uh, like I show you quickly, uh, the, the, the thickness of, of, of the wood, it's more high. And uh, you know when the wine enters in, in the oak and uh, when the wine is in contact with the air, it creates uh, like a crystal and it, blo it blocks the exchange with air and wine. It, for that, we use a uh, demi -mui because the thickness is more high during seven years and the barrel because the thickness is more smaller during five years, no more. It's not because it's dirty it's because you have no exchange and we're looking for the exchange and the aging. Okay, and those crystals that you mentioned there, they are, they are the tartaric acid crystals? Yes, exactly, sorry, yeah. Yeah, and the, the, so the, the, what you're, you're saying there, they form almost like a barrier uh, against the oak, so they, they, uh, they, they're, they're working against the, the idea of, of using oak when you've got too much tartaric acid crystals. Yeah, but it's a normal evaporation of, of the wine. It's not because you have a, a high level of acid in your wine. It's, no. You have an, an influence, but uh, it, it, it's just the, the natural process uh, of, the, of the aging. Okay. So, JD, is there much of a difference to the final wine if a wine has been aged in 
new or older oak barrels? Yes, a lot. I think, um, but stylistically, you need to um, decide what style do you want. Do you want a Chardonnay, which is a buttery Chardonnay with a lot of new oak, or would you like a more limey Chardonnay? Um, but luckily these days, I think, like you said, barrels are so expensive. Um, I know sometimes people buy barrels and they, they call it, they break it in. So they will put a, they've got one label or one wine that's quite oaky. And they will put that first year, the new barrel, they will put the wine in there. So that's a quite an oaky wine that they get out of that. And then the second vintage, which you call second full barrel, will go to the to a certain um, wine. And as you go, so we, like like Julian as well, has said, um, I think we use our um, Demi Mui, our 600 liters, up to 10 years. Um, but we've got a, like a very light Senso and Grenache that goes with it. We literally just want the slight micro oxygenation we don't want any um oaky flavors in the wine and that that's why we just put it in very old um demi um, okay yeah. so and, and again sort of uh, to sort of put you on the spot a little bit um julian um in terms of new oak how how many oak barrels would you buy in a year on average uh I can say how many, but uh, uh, in, in my in my barrel cellar, I try to have uh, 20 or 25 percent of new oak uh, in in all the all the cuvee. Uh, it's just like I explained to you. It, it's better to have a, a, a new oak. It, it's more safe. Also, uh, a, a thing that uh, you, you need to know inside the oak barrel, you can have the yeast and uh, uh, plenty of bacteria. And more you you have a, a, a young uh, barrel in, in the in the barrel cellar, uh, better is it for the winemaker and more safe is it for for the wine. Hmm. Now, JD Julian touched there on sort of you know you, you can get bacteria etc. In, in, in some of these barrels, how, how do you treat that? How do you look after the barrel? Well, that's I think crucial, and I think somewhere there was a question on the on the on on um, in there also. Do you, how do you store the barrels um, when it's emptied? I think that's big. So for me, uh, the best way to store a barrel is with wine in it, um, just prior to bottling um, or blending. Um, as soon as you start washing a barrel and it's empty, it can dry out and that's where your bacteria can creep, uh, creep in. But there's different um, ways of, of washing a barrel and keeping the barrel. It's obviously um, higher humidity. So we keep our empty barrels with the full barrels inside of the barrel um, cellar, which is about say 80 percent uh, humidity and then we've got like a high pressure washer um, that, that goes up to 80 degrees celsius that will kill most of the um well the bacteria in a barrel and then you get a little sulfur strip you can also uh, like or sulfur candle you can burn in a in a barrel if you want to keep it for for say a few months um prior to to, to using it yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, if I could ask you both, if you were to name just one wine from, whether it be from Domaine Boutineau or whether it be from Bilderberg, that you personally would say represents the perfect partnership between terroir and oak, what would you say? If I can ask maybe Julien first. Oh. D -d difficult to share with uh, uh, Lessis and, uh, and La Côte Sauvage. Uh, if you prefer the oak aromatic, maybe La Cote Sauvage, it, it's better. If you prefer the, the finesse and the elegance of the tannin helping by the oak, maybe this is it's the best. Difficult to share, uh, Nigel, really. Boss, I say. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like having children, I suppose. <laughs> you don't have a favorite child. Uh, the next one. <laughs> <laughs> And, and JD? No, I would definitely say um, our Wilderberg White, um, the, the, the ancient Bushfine Similon with the Austrian um, Stockinger barrel. I think it's a match made in heaven. Yeah, just works. Okay. So there's a couple of questions that we'll just uh, quickly touch on. Um, the first question, just reading backwards, uh, is a question from Malta. Um, when choosing oak barrels, do you consider oxygen transfer rates? So if I could ask JD first. Okay, so um, when you, that's the one thing we didn't touch on. When you uh, 
choose your oak you get the grain in the oak so you get extra fine grain you get and down you get to medium grain so in theory if you have a barrel which is a medium grain the maturation will go quicker as you go to extra fine grain um, it will go longer so say you've got a wine and i say this is theory sometimes they say we study four years to become a winemaker and there's a lot of science in it but sometimes the, in the practical practicality making wine it, it um, sometimes differ but if you have a wine and you say you only have six months um, take again say a chardonnay i only have six months then you would rather use a medium grain um, uh, yeah, barrel but if you have like a Cabernet or Merlot or Cabernet Franc or in our case a, a Malbec a Cabernet Franc blend that wants to mature got tannins it needs to mature for a longer time then you will looking at extra fine grain so it's slowly micro oxygenation over a longer time which is um, yeah smaller call it smaller pores if that's the mm-hmm. right word that goes into the wine where medium grain is slightly bigger um, and slightly more oxygen boom at one time and so you get more a quicker maturation um, yeah, earlier. Okay. Uh, another question that's just come in, a, a question from the UK. On average, for a wine which is in barrel for 18 months, how many times would you expect to taste that wine before releasing it? If I could ask Julian first that question. Uh, can you repeat yeah, sure. So Jersey? if you have a wine in barrel for, say, 18 months, as yeah. an example... How often would you taste that wine um, before you released the wine, before you made the decision to bottle? Oh, uh, you, 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 you test your barrel. Uh, it, it's like a, a baby. You cannot leave your wine in the barrel and wake up after six months or ten months and, 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 and just to see the result. Uh, you, you test the, bar- the barrel every three months. Uh, not all the barrel, but uh, uh, you, you test maybe... Uh, uh, one barrel on ten, uh, just to see the evolution of the wine, just to be sure that your your forecast uh, it, it's good. Uh, because in example in Domaine Boutino, uh, we we aging the wine twenty or twenty four months, and uh, we adjust uh, the, 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 this, this time uh, with the testing. Uh, we we test uh, regularly. We can say that the barrel. And uh, you, you take the decision one or two months before take off the wine. Okay. Uh, questions come in from Hong Kong. It, it was a question directed to me, but I'm going to turn this round a bit. Um, asking about sort of, uh, in essence, um, I suppose sort of, um, do, do customers, um, do you think in your opinion, do they, do they, um, do they have an opinion about oak? Uh, does that make sense? So do you, do you think sort of there are, do you think there, there's people out there that prefer oaky wines or do you think people just don't understand oak and stay away from oak, if that makes sense? So, so JD, if I, if I can ask you first. But it looks like Julian wanted to jump in there. So Julian, you can go if you want to. <laughs> now, um, I think, yeah, I think definitely there's a preference for oak in some countries even um, when, call it by name now, but there's definitely some some countries that likes more oaky wines and sometimes more sweeter wines, not uh, sugar sweetness, but from the oak sweetness, um, where other countries prefer um, more tighter wines, more higher acidity, uh, lesser oak. Um, does, does it matter for a lot of consumers? I think at the end of the day, and the game that, well, game, the, the, the winery that we are in, and I think um, Julian as well, is, like I said earlier, the wine needs to be in balance with the oak. So if you pick a wine or taste the wine, and I, and I can talk for us, it, and it's overly oaked, the wine is definitely not ready um, to be drunk. Um, I, it must be a, a harmony between the oak and the and the wine. So I think if something stands, well, anything in a wine, if something stands out and you're in a restaurant and it's just oak, um, I can promise you the winemaker wasn't, well, maybe it was, but it's not supposed to taste like that. That wine still needs to mature and it still needs to, to get this harmony and, and be more in balance, yeah. Would you agree with that? Would you uh, agree with that? also, if you have a perfect integration of oak, sometimes you can forget the oak in the first testing. And when you have that, 
uh, you realize the perfect balance in the wine. Because for me, there is oak and oak. When it's bad and great, when you smell the oak directly and it's too much, you, you think uh, you, you, you eat a, a, a part of wood, you, you lose uh, for the wine. Uh, but when it's perfectly integrated, and when you ask, there is a rock in this wine or not? Yes, for me, it's a, it's a perfect result. Uh, and, and it's that we're looking for uh, in our job. Excellent. This uh, a final question from Ireland. Um, have either of you ever experimented with other types of wood, whether that be cherry wood or acacia wood, or would you even consider um, uh, experimenting? Julian? Yeah, yeah. Um, acacia wood, uh, it's uh, often using for the, the white wine in, in France. But uh, <clears throat> to, to be honest, uh, difficult uh, in, in Rhone Valley. When you have uh, the, the, the main variety in Rhone Valley, it's the Grenache. And it's a very uh, a sensitive variety. And the Grenache don't accept so a lot of another aromatic than the fruit aromatic. Uh, acacia oak. It's a oak with a lot of aromatic, a little bit like uh, like the American oak. In, 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 if you compare in the in the red wine, and sometimes it can be good in some different variety. Maybe if you make an hundred percent Roussanne with a lot of structure and uh, you want to change a little bit the aromatic and and, and rise the complexity, why not? But uh, you, I saw the, the food part for me uh, with a different oak like that. And for you, JD, would you, would you ever experiment with other types of oak? Um, I don't know if I would. I haven't, I haven't um, yes, yeah, so I've tasted a lot of them, but like exactly like Julian said, um, it's really, it's overpowering some of, uh, we've got like a red bush um, oak that they some, sometimes use in a cedar. But it's just it's one dimensional you just get the oak um so it, you lose the fruit and you lose the grape so i think um, for us we will i won't say never never is a long time but at least not in the next 10 years we'll not use um other types of oak so yeah or other types of wood yeah fantastic excellent yeah. good good, good. Yeah, uh, julian jd um, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we've, we've gone sort of uh, slightly over time on, on this uh, uh, session, uh, but sincerely, thank you both for sharing your passion. And um, this is a very interesting and very fascinating subject, which I'm sure uh, the two of you could talk for hours on. Um, but um, both sincerely, many thanks for your time. And I hope to catch up with you both soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks, Nigel. Bye. Bye. Bye.